Welcome back to the Red Dice Diaries and in the sixth video of our Matters of Fate series I'm going to be talking about the default actions in Fate. Okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about the actions in Fate, also the potential outcomes of those actions and how you go about rolling the dice to undertake those actions. Now, most things in Fate where actions are concerned revolve around the number four. For instance, you roll four Fate dice. There are four potential default actions in the game. And there are also four potential outcomes from those actions. Now, four actions may seem a little restrictive. After all, we're used to role-playing, by and large, being this free creative space where as long as it's within re the reasonable limits established for the campaign world you can attempt to do whatever you want don't panic though these four actions actually cover the entire gamut of activity that you could hope to undertake in a fate game so before we get into what makes up an action let's talk briefly about how you actually undertake them so in order to undertake an action in Fate Core or Fate Accelerated, you choose a skill if it's Fate Core or an approach if it's Fate Accelerated that is appropriate for the type of action you're undertaking. You then roll four Fate dice and total up the result. You then add your skill or approach as is applicable to this number and the total tells you your result on the Fate ladder, which you can see there. If you have any bonuses from stunts or from invoking an aspect, you then add these on to get your final result. Or you re-roll the dice if that's what you're using your invoke for. For more details on invoking, you can see the video on aspects, which you can see by clicking there, and that'll tell you more about that. Now, whenever you roll your dice, you're comparing your roll to a source of opposition. If this is active opposition, i.e. an NPC or some forces actively trying to stop you, then the opposition would be another dice roll. If it's passive opposition, i.e. something's in your way but isn't actively opposing you, like a locked door for instance, then your opposition will be a set difficulty on the fate ladder that the GM will give you. So let's move on to talk about the four outcomes. Now, in fate, whenever you roll the dice, you either succeed succeed with style or fail now i know i said four outcomes there but there's also a separate outcome for if you tie on your dice rolls we'll go into that in a moment whenever you roll lower than the opposition you fail either you don't get to do what you want or it does happen but there are some serious negative consequences as a result for example if we have a thief who is trying to pick the lock on a door a fail might mean that the lock is simply too fiendishly tricky for them to pick or it could be that they do manage to pick the lock but it takes a bit longer and it sets off an alarm that brings the nearby guards running if you roll the same as your opposition this is a tie and you either get what you want but at a minor cost or you get a lesser version of what you want if you roll higher than your opposition by one or two shifts i.e your final total is one or two higher than your opposition's number then you succeed in achieving your goal at no cost if you roll higher than your opposition by three or more shifts then you are judged to have succeeded with style and that basically means that you've succeeded in your goal but you also gain an additional added benefit so for example with our stealthy thief perhaps succeeding with style means that he not only picks the lock but he does it in half the time that was expected and so cunningly replaces the locking mechanism that no one can tell it's actually been accessed but he places it in such a way so that the party can easily quickly leave through the door later okay so what are minor and serious costs well a serious cost makes the immediate situation worse such as the guard patrol that we mentioned in our earlier example creating a new problem or exacerbating an existing one whereas a minor cost is a story detail that is problematic or bad for the player characters but doesn't necessarily slow down their immediate progress in any fashion for example with our example of the thief if the thief picks the lock with a minor cost they still get through but perhaps the lock has been obviously tampered with and may be spotted later and investigated by the patrols that regularly walk the corridors of the castle 
So now we've talked a little bit about the potential outcomes, let's move on to what the actual four actions are. And the four actions in Fate are overcome, create an advantage, attack and defend. And I'm going to cover attack and defend actions first in a little more detail, since they're some of the most straightforward actions and they're effectively opposite sides of the same coin. When you make an attack, you're attempting to harm someone in a conflict and or take them out of action. When defending, you are attempting to avoid having someone doing the same to you. Whenever anyone is attacked in the fate system, if they're not incapacitated or in any means otherwise unable to act, then they are entitled to make a defense roll. Failing an attack means that you don't cause any harm and that your opponent has effectively succeeded on their defense roll. When you tie, you don't cause any harm, but you gain a boost, which is a temporary aspect with a free invoke. And again, you can see the aspects video for more details on this. And you might use this boost to gain an advantage in the future. Boosts only last for as long as makes sense within the narrative fiction. For example, if you gain a boost sand in, the, in their eyes, and then the guard spends a turn or makes an overcome action to rub the sand out of their eyes, then the boost would disappear. When you succeed, you inflict a hit on the target equal to the number of shifts scored. Your opponent must either then buy off the value of your hit using a combination of stress and or consequences, or if this isn't possible, they are taken out of action. Succeeding with style means that you inflict a hit as per normal, but you can choose to reduce the value of your hit by one and take a boost in addition to doing damage. Defense rolls effectively do the opposite. Succeeding means you avoid the attack or the attempt to gain an advantage over you. Success with style works as with a normal success, but you turn the tables on your enemy and gain a boost. Tying means that your opponent gets a boost and failing means that you suffer the consequences of the attack advantage attempt. The next type of action is the overcome action and it's used when you attempt to overcome an obstacle or source of opposition that you are not trying to inflict harm on. Our example of the thief and the lock from earlier would be an overcome role. Failing means that you have either failed or succeeded at a serious cost. Tying means that you attain your goal at a minor cost. Success means you've achieved your goal. Succeeding with style is the same as a normal success, but you also gain a boost. The final action is the creating an advantage action, and it covers a wide range of potential activities. But basically it all boils down to a character trying to use their abilities to take advantage of either the environment or the situation they find themselves in. This could be changing the surroundings, such as setting something on fire or spreading oil on the ground. It could be using existing parts of the setting to your advantage. For instance, the earlier example of throwing sand in an enemy's face, or perhaps using an enemy's weakness against it. You might roll to create an advantage of repelled by the cross if you were trying to ward off a vampire with a weakness for crucifixes, for instance. When you roll to create an advantage, you must specify whether you're creating a new situation aspect or taking advantage of one that has already been established. You should also establish whether the aspect is attached to the environment or a character or NPC. For example, throwing sand in someone's face is attached to the target, whereas setting a barn on fire would be attached to the environs of the barn itself. Failing means that you either don't create the aspect or that you do but someone else gets the free invoke. It works to someone else's advantage instead of yours. Now this might involve rewording the aspect to have it make more sense in that context. If you're using an existing aspect then someone else gets the free invoke. So for example, if you fail on your role to throw sand in the guard's face, we might reword the aspect to off balance since perhaps you've overextended yourself trying to fling the sand and the free invoke might go to the guard as he steps around you and takes advantage of the fact that you've overextended yourself. When you tie, you gain a temporary boost instead of the aspect you were going for. So for instance, instead of blinded, we might rename it to temporarily blinded in our sand flinging example. If you're using an existing aspect, you gain one free invoke. When you succeed, you create the advantage with one free invoke or you place a free invoke on an already existing aspect. Succeeding with style means that you create the aspect with two free invokes or you gain two free invokes on an existing aspect. So there we go, that about covers the four default actions in Fate. 
along with the possible outcomes and how you go about actually rolling those action. Although initially, I'll admit, when I very first looked at Fate, I thought, you know, four actions, that seems a little bit limited. I liked it that role play is a fairly limitless activity where anything you can conceive within your imagination, you can attempt. You might not always succeed, but you can at least attempt it. However, as you actually look into them, you can see that all four of the actions are quite general. And I don't say that to be derogatory. I say that because there is a great deal of things that can be covered by the four default actions. In fact, in all of the many fake games I've played, I've not found an instance where someone has suggested something and it's not been possible to cover it with one of the existing four actions. Although if anyone does have any examples they want to throw at me or questions they have with regards to how you could use those actions to cover something that's come up in game, I'll be more than happy to chat about that. And I hope if you've enjoyed this video, you'll consider clicking on the red dice up there to subscribe to my channel. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, give it a thumbs down. As always, if you have any comments, either put them in the box below or hit me up in the Google Plus links. I hope you'll join us for our next video in the Matters of Fate series. And I will see you soon. So until then, take care and happy gaming wherever you are in the world.